efforts in UST to discover anti-TB agents dates back to 1991, where this uh, kind of research was spearheaded by my supervisor, Professor Dr. Alicia Aguinaldo. So what we do, what they do then was to tap um, plant sources and um, discover anti-TB agents. Next slide, please. All right, so what motivates us this kind of research? So TB is um, a global pandemic that is caused by the bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis. And the current treatment for TB is a combination of, or a cocktail of many anti-TB agents, uh, uh, drugs like uh, rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and etambutol. So if you do not follow this uh, treatment regimen, it can cause the rise of multidrug resistant strains. And therefore, there is a need to discover new anti TB drugs. Next slide, please. Okay, so when I came back to the Philippines in um, 2011, I, I tried to set up my laboratory in such a way that what we do are chemistries that are inspired by biologies. So when we, so to do this, so uh, since I have a background in natural products, so we use natural products as templates, and then we try to synthesize them, and along the way, if you have or discover a reactive intermediate, you could um, use this to develop um, some compounds and do scaffold diversity synthesis, after which we do screening, and then, after screening, we could um, get some uh, candidates for further development in uh, discovering new drugs. So we could also use these compounds to pro probe their uh, mechanism of action. Next slide, please. Right, so the strategy uh, of my research relies on a basic um, chemical process that underlies uh, many reactions in, um, in uh, the cells. For example, uh, most of these reactions are polar in nature. So when we talk about polar reactions, we are talking of positives and negatives. Okay, so um, these positive species are what we call as electrophiles and the negatively charged species or uh, species that are rich in electrons are called nucleophiles. Next slide, please. So a typical example um, in biology is uh, the chemistry of vision, wherein um, the reaction between um, the enzyme opsin, which contains um, a nucleophile, an amino group, it reacts with an electrophile that is derived from vitamin A. So when this happens, they form um, an imine that is very light sensitive. And then after uh, getting in contact with light, they dissociate to form again the opsin and the retinal. Next slide. Okay, so we use the concept of electrophilicity in discovering new drugs, okay, especially in the discovery of new anti-tubercular agents. So what we seek are normally structures that contain that double bond um, that is uh, labeled with alpha and beta and connected to a C double O. Um, please forgive me because um, my... Uh, my research is kind of very technical, no? So I hope uh, you enjoyed your organic chemistry when you were in college. So the, this structure here uh, is electrophilic and can readily react with nucleophiles, okay? Nucleophiles that are found in uh, the enzymes of pathogenic organisms like 
tuber uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Next slide, please. Right, so um, I can just give some examples that of compounds uh, that we discovered in our laboratory. So one is um, this molecule right here. So we call it globospiramin, and it was um, isolated from Wakanga globosa. Right, so this compound shows um, uh, anti-HIV activity in the Latin stage. It also showed low micromolar anti-TB activity and activity to a wide range of cancer cells. Now, recently, we also um, isolated a compound that is antibacterial, antifungal, and the, uh, it was isolated from a new genus of a fungi. And we called it sparticulin. So if you notice at the structure, both of them contains this double bond that is connected with this uh, CO group. Next slide. Okay, so in drug discovery, what limits natural products is that you are limited with only um, a small collection of molecules. But in drug discovery, what we want is to have a collection of molecules so you can study well how well they behave with the target disease. Next slide. So, in our laboratory, what we want is to convert um, natural products using this kind of reactions for example, ring expansion to enlarge the ring, ring fusion to make more annihilated structures, ring cleavage to form an open structures, and ring rearrangement. Next slide. So, next slide, please. So, we were interested in the natural products from uh, Secorinega alkaloids. And, um, next slide. And what we did is we isolated some compounds and uh, unfortunately, all of them showed poor anti-TB activity. Next slide, please. So, we further to improve the activity, we subjected them to a very simple reaction in such a way that it can be opened and, can be, uh, and we can uh, get more structures for more structure activity relationship studies. Next slide. Okay, so in our, in our effort, so we, we were able to get these compounds, characterize them. Next slide, please. So we were able to get, next slide. Um, uh, 11 compounds. Next slide, please. And after assessing their anti-TB activity, um, we were able to get um, a very promising compound which has a low MIC activity with TB, which is very comparable with the uh, standard drug isoniazid. Next slide. And to clarify the activity of the compound, we made some molecular docking versus um, Inuil ACP reductase. Next slide, please. And found that it has a similar binding with isoniazid have uh, with interactions with several uh, amino acids in its active site. Next slide. And we also um, tested its activity versus um, some cancer cells and most of them conferred um, a moderate cytotoxic activity and uh, they were not comparable with doxorubicin. Next slide, please. Next slide. So uh, with that, I would like to thank the, the NAS for the grant and my students. Thank you. Thank you.